this is Blair with Girl Scouts of Kentuckyana. I'm here today to tell you how you can easily earn your Junior Geocacher badge. Super easy to do, super super fun. If you're not a junior, that's okay. I'm an adult Girl Scout and I love geocaching. It's a ton of fun. So what is geocaching? This says geocaching is your chance to be a part to be part global explorer, part detective. You'll search for treasure chests known as geocaches using a device called a GPS receiver to find each chest's secret hiding place. Get ready for a thrilling adventure. It really is thrilling. It's so much fun. I love to go geocaching. So what is a geocache? Let's start there. This is a geocache. This is a geocache that my kids and I um, have hidden nearby our house. Um, I went out into the woods and got it and I have to go put it back in case a geocacher comes looking for it. But geocaches come in all different sizes. This is an ammo can. They're used a lot. Some are the size of a pencil eraser and then others can be actually really large. Um, and they come in all shapes and sizes. All different types of creativity are used to make geocaches. Um, I will link some videos and I'm also going to show you a YouTube channel that I want you to check out that has some really funny videos uh, put together by the folks at geocaching.com to teach you a little bit more. So this is a geocache. Uh, you'll find it out in the world. There's plenty all over the place. There's more than 3 million geocaches in, on the earth. And then you're going to use a GPS. This is a GPS, it's a global positioning uh, system. Um, and what it does is it uses longitude and latitude to find a waypoint. That's where the two points intersect. And that's the, the, uh, what you use to find the geocaches. If you don't have a GPS tracker, that's okay. You can also just use a smartphone. Uh, there is an app and I'll show you it too. So let's talk about this really quick. So prepare for your adventure. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose one of the steps for each of the five steps. Uh, I think it makes it easier to do it this way. You certainly don't have to do it exactly like I do. So step one, prepare for your adventure. The goal of a geocaching adventure is to find a geocache or hidden treasure box. You'll use GPS clues to uncover treasures that most people don't know exist. There are over one million hidden geocaches. This is a little old, there's three million now. Um, it's very popular. There are over a million geocaches all over the world. Before you get started, get expert information. See the sidebar for good questions to answer. So that's in this book. So what I'm gonna do is step one. With an adult, visit an official geocaching site. So I'm gonna move my camera and then I'm going to show you the geocaching site that's right behind me. Okay, so step two is learn how to use a GPS receiver. To find your way to a hidden geocache, you need to zero in on its coordinates. Coordinates are the measurements called longitude and latitude. Longitude is where something on the earth is east to west, so the long lines. And then your latitude is where it is between the north and the south pole, so north and south, up and down. So where these two points meet, that's your location where your geocache is or your waypoint. So what choice we're going to do, we're going to find the GPS coordinates of three things. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I could show you how to use um, this GPS tracker, but GPS trackers come in all different shapes and sizes. They all do different things. So it would be kind of silly for me to show you how this works unless you had this exact one. So if you know somebody that has a GPS tracker, ask them if uh, they could show you how to use it. But something else that we can do is we're going to go back to the computer again and I'll show you how we can use Google Maps to find longitude and latitude. Okay, now that we're situated in front of the computer again, what I've done is I pulled up the Girl Scout headquarters in Louisville on Lexington Road. So what you do is uh, find, maybe you can find your house, you can find your school, you could find your nearest grocery store or maybe a friend's house. So when you have found what it is that you're looking for, this little red dot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on it and then you're going to say, what's here. 
And this is popping up at the bottom. You can't see it very well, but here we go. I want to highlight it. You can see it. This is the actual coordinates of the Girl Scout office in Louisville. So what you need to do is either use your GPS tracker or you can use a computer or a smartphone and find three different locations and find your coordinates for them. Okay. So we have step one and two down. Now it's time for number three, which is actually pretty fun. Step three is make a trade item. And I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to show you some things. So before you start out on an adventure, you need to carry an item that you'll leave at the geocache. This item has to be small enough to fit inside the box and shouldn't be expensive. Some common items are trading cards and small toys. So it gives you a couple of options. You can uh, make something that represents Girl Scouts. So maybe you have a swap that you could put in there, um, or maybe you have a badge that you could sit in there. Um, you can make a piece of jewelry. You could make a friendship bracelet or something like that. Or you could make something that represents you. You could make a drawing, a collage, um, a or maybe like you really love the sea, so you could paint um, a seashell. But what's really important is never use your name, don't put your phone number in there, or your address, anything like that. So when you find a geocache, we're gonna open this up and I'll show you what's in it. When you find a geocache, there is always at least one thing, and that's a log. Um, that's uh, usually a small notebook or a piece of paper where all of the geocachers who have found your caches uh, write down that they found it. They usually use um, a code name um, that they make on the geocaching.com. You don't actually use your real name. So when you find a geocache, you always make sure to bring a pen and you write your name in the log. So let's open this up. And what's nice about ammo cans is it has rubber around the side, so it stays nice and dry in here. So we opened it up, and there's a bunch of stuff in there. So let's see. The most important thing, we have our log. Let me open it up and I'll show you. So it has the words official geocache, so we know that this is an actual um, game piece. So if somebody who doesn't geocache finds this box, um, this says, hey, this is a game piece, just please leave it alone. It's supposed to be here. So there's a log and it's got notebook pages. We also have a pen and we also have a pencil with a sharpener in the event that it maybe does get wet and the pen stops working. So you'll find those pieces always in there. And then what else you'll find is the little trinkets that you have. So some little toys that you might find, some little things. Here's a swap, a little swap, a Girl Scout swap. Um, so what happens is you bring something and you leave it and you can take one of these. You never take something unless you left something and always trade equal things. So don't put some leaves in there or uh, something silly and take a nice thing. So that's uh, what you should do. There's some more swaps, There's a little turtle. So this certainly will um, teach a little bit about Girl Scout stuff and, you know, what we do. We make swaps and we play games. Uh, I don't have any patches in here, but I could certainly put some extra ones in there. Okay, now that you've made your trade item in step three, we're going to skip ahead and we're going to talk about number five and then we'll go back to number four. So in these geocaches, there's all of that swag that you can trade, but there are some things that are meant to be taken but you don't keep it. So let me show you this. This is what's called a trackable, okay? Um, some people call them travel bugs, but what makes them really cool is on the back, I know that this is backwards, there's a little code and it says trackable at geocaching.com. So if you find something that has a code on it, that means that you can take it, you log that you found it, and you put it in another geocache. So some people uh, buy these, you can buy them on geocaching.com, they have a shop, uh, they're super cheap. Some people buy them and they make it a goal to 
uh, that it wants to get to the other side of the state that it's in, or some want to travel all the way around the globe. So all of the different geocachers help by finding it and taking it a little bit further to another geocache. So that's what this is. You can buy one and use the geocaching.com to track where it's been. So if you bought one and you put it in a geocache, you use your account to see if anybody has found it and if it's moved. So you can make it its own goal. You give it a little name. This guy's name is Hedgy, uh, Hedgy the Hedgehog. And yeah, it's really cool. So that is another fun element of geocaching. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about trackables, um, we're gonna go back to step four, which is actually going on your geocaching adventure. So um, you can make it a hiking adventure. You can go on a themed adventure. You can do a multi-cache adventure. You can do all of these things, but um, what you need to know is that you should never go alone, bring an adult with you, um, and a Girl Scout is always prepared. So you need to maybe bring a water bottle. Um, if it's cold, bring a jacket. If you're gonna be hiking, wear good shoes and not uh, flip-flops. Uh, if it might rain, bring an umbrella or a parka. Bug spray, hat, um, you know what you need when you go on an adventure because you're a Girl Scout. So just make sure that you're always prepared and you also need to stay safe. So obviously you need to uh, not do things that are bad. So you can't trespass on private property. Um, if roads are closed, you just need to make sure that you obey those rules. So I'm gonna go back to my computer and I'm gonna show you a couple more things and then you will know all there is to know about geocaching and you are ready for your adventure. You're gonna have so much fun. Geocaching is a blast. And the fun thing is you can do it whenever you want, anytime, day or night, rain or shine, the geocaches are out there waiting for you to find them. I wanted to show you this website. Um, you can certainly learn a whole lot more than what I've told you. Um, go to YouTube and you're going to search geocaching. And then geocaching has its very own channel. And the reason I'm bringing you here, because if you scroll down right here, there are some geocaching basics videos. They're all super short. They're pretty funny and it'll teach you um, even more about geocaching. So what it is, finding them, uh, talking about that etiquette and making sure that you uh, do it safely and you do it in a good way. And then hiding a geocache and making a favorite point worthy geocache. So once you've found a bunch of geocaches and you think you're ready to place your own, these videos will give you some great suggestions to get ready. So that's all I have. Get out there, enjoy, find some geocaches, and you're going to have a great time. Thank you.